Well, great afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. This is what, post-convention? How many of you went to convention? Are you still full and riding from a high on convention? Let me see it in the chat. Who's full? Anybody full besides me? And y'all have to excuse <laughs> me. I, I'm, I'm getting over something. Last day of convention Sunday, I was in the pool talking to a bunch of people. Someone to the right of me, I can't remember who was next to me, sneeze. They covered their mouth, but I saw the droplets coming and I just said, oh, mm. man, I made it this long. And sure <laughs> enough, now I'm getting over something, but you can't hold me down. Sometimes we got to play hurt, right? And if That's right. Uh, our message from Dr. Eric Thomas didn't teach us anything, it taught us that, right? You got to keep going no matter what. Um, so before mm -hmm. we get started with this week one uh, support, I want to get takeaways uh, from the people who attended convention, just your takeaway over the the entire experience. And I definitely want to hear from those of you who it was your first convention. Just who wants to share one takeaway from the entire experience? Who wants to go first? Um, I'll go first. Okay, Koya. Okay, so it was my first convention. I will say that it was very empowering. It was very motivational. It gave me that drive back that I lost. It literally lit a fire in me and it got me ready to get back going and help people build my business, build other people. It held me accountable for things that I haven't been doing, wanted me to be a better person, a better follower and a better leader. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Koya, I definitely see you director by the end of the year. That's the goal. I know it is. I know it is. Miss Delta, thank you for sharing. Wow, where do I where do I start? It was just well, just the beginning to see you and talk with you over video. And when I heard your voice, I immediately had to turn around. I was like, wow, Tanisha Burke is like, I'm jumping out of my skin. But the entire experience was phenomenal. Just to be there to physically see the, the people that you see and, and directors that you see on video and to, and to see them physically face to face was phenomenal. And just, it was just raining nuggets. It was raining nuggets. I mean, I was there as a sponge soaking it all up. And as the um, our young lady just spoke, it just puts you in a different uh, mind frame and you just want to hit the ground running. Uh, I just say to myself, be careful how you run, which way you run, and the direction that you run, and just keep moving it forward. Stay consistent. And 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 what everything that we received, don't just yeah, sit on it. Don't just sit on it. Utilize it and move forward. Just I move forward. It, it was just... It. Phenomenal. Thank you, Delta. Miss Benita. I am so full. Um, how did um director um said you say I'm going somewhere because I'm working on something? <laughs> I'm working yes. on something because I'm going somewhere. I will be walking that stage next year. Yeah. Uh, I and I'm gonna be like that lady, the one of the um three star, I think she's three star director. She went through from January to June, one star, two star, three star. So when I tell you, just to see, you you see y'all on Zoom, but to just to be by y'all in person, I didn't get pictures of the ladies, but I got pictures of the men. So I'm rubbing elbows with the millionaires. So I'm like, and then I hyped up other people. I was like, yo, we walk in the state. They was like, yes, we walk in the state. So when I tell you I'm hyped, what I got out of it from everybody was they didn't let nothing stop them from foreclosure to repossession to surgery, to this, that, that. They're not letting, not, even they had to eat hot dogs because she had to work. I mean, she was on that phone. It's just like, when I tell you it was hype, it was hype, so I'm hype. That's Good, exactly. I love it, I love it. Kim? Kim Parker, did I lose her? Sorry, oh, yes, I did not unmute. Um, I just liked how Eric Thomas said that our business is changing the world and are we going to be a part of that change? Um, and also liked how he mentioned um, if we're not being successful in our business, then we need to stop and, and get clarity for ourselves and what our message is 
um, really, you know, hone down on what what it is that we're saying to people so that yes. we can um, just help people, help people get income with monthly income that could help change their lives. I love it. I love it. Did anybody readjust their why after listening to Dr. Thomas to really get some clarity? Dovey, can you talk about that? Because he said he wanted to make sure everybody left with clarity. And a lot of times, you know, if you don't have a strong enough why to do this business, everything will become an excuse for why you don't do the business. So Dovey, you want to talk about that? Yeah, mine totally is not even near what my life was before. What was it before? Like my, was my, my kids, which which my kids are important. Mm -hmm. You know, they come number one, but it's bigger than that. It's bigger than it's. And, and I came home and was talking to my kids about it. I was like, you know, I said we have to carry this torch. You know, for Malcolm X, for you know um, Rosa Parks, all these people that um that changed our life. How dare we just sit down and be like, okay, you know, after they done worked hard and what are we going to do for the next generation? You know, so that changed a lot. And my kids, they're, they're on fire now too. So I'm just like, you know, and, and that, it just kind of checked myself too, to pour into my kids about, you know, what happened before us. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. good. That's good. Anybody else? Constance, Director Burke. Oh, wait. Uh, go ahead, Lorna, and then Constance. I, I'm, I, I was saying that it was so nice to finally meet you. It's very different from when we sit across the screen like this. And, and <laughs> the fact that you hugged me, it, was, it yes. felt so great. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's my big sister. <laughs> but listen, talk about full. I feel like somebody put me in gasoline drawers and lit me on fire. Wow. That's how full I am. I feel like I have a, a new voice, you know? Because you all know how timid I am, but this, I'm telling you, you have to be in the room. That's a big difference. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Beverly? Yes, ma'am. And I, I just hope I don't cry while I share. Um, you know, I met so many people and as I talk to them and learn their story, how some of them got there and, you know, just some of the things they had gone through, you know, I was just so moved to understand that this is such a big vision. And, um, you know, when you were just sharing about ET, um, God has placed in my spirit, you know, I always had that spirit of Moses. I've gone through some, you know, we all have our situations, but I've had some wilderness situations and they really grew me up. And, you know, knowing the story of Harriet Tubman, because I've studied her so much. And, you know, God told me, he said, Mm. He said, as I, as I elevate you, don't harm my people, help my people. Mm. And one thing about Harriet Tubman, that, that woman went back over and over and she always helped the people. And so it's just a big, it's a, just a big vision. I, I heard people's stories and my heart was so full and, I'm, and I, I connected with so many people and it just stretched my why. And uh, it's like, you know, I'm on fire. What Mr. Um, uh, Donald Bradley said, you know, he said, he's not doing this for himself and his family. He, he, he has what he needs. He really does. Mm -hmm. He's doing this for the masses, the simple people. I saw people from all walks of life and I saw them being put in a place where they were, they, they, they felt beautiful. They felt elegant. And uh, this is what this opportunity gives us. It is so big. It is so big. And so it was just stretching my why. So that's, and I know I couldn't hold it back, but yeah, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> Thanks, Beverly. Kelly? Good morning. Good morning. This was my first conference. Um, I've been in a company oh, just making over a month of uh, being in the company and to go to convention, it changed the whole game for me. Um, it was very powerful. I learned a lot. Um, when I first came in, my mindset was just travel, travel, travel. But after leaving the convention, it's more than travel. It's making a life change for myself and for my family and for friends that I know that needs that life change. So yes. it was very powerful and, and very inspiring to go. 
I love it. I love it. Uh, Sandra. Oh, I got to get to you, Constance. I skipped you. Sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, I've just, the conference, it was my first conference and the energy in amongst everybody was just amazing. And all I can visualize and all the classes were amazing. Everything filled me up. It gave me that confirmation I needed. Um, it reiterated my why. It expanded my why to not only helping my family, but yes, helping others. But the, the vision, they kept popping that screen up on the, they kept popping the, the vision up on the screen of how many of us had come together as one unit under Planet Marketing. That was just, that vision will never leave my head to see all of us there for one reason, to help others. We are servants and that, you know, I've always wanted to help people and now I really want to help people. So that's my why expanded. <laughs> It was a lot, I know. <laughs> and that's, I'm done. <laughs> You're on mute, Tanisha. Oh, oh I was saying Constance, Constance. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, it really um, confirmed my new why because um, it, about a month or so ago, I said, you know, cause it's hard for me to take care of myself. I'm used to taking care of some smoke. I'm used to taking care and looking out for everybody. I always said, when my father passed away, I said, I'm the son. My mother never had the brother. My sister never had the father. My daughter never had. So it helped me to um, see that I can help myself and what I have in my spirit and in my heart to do to help people that helps me. And when he came out and said, the ancestors must be proud. That right there, I'm like, okay, I'm thinking in the right space. My why is in the right space. It just confirmed it. And it's a, I wrote that it's okay for me to have the why that I have now, which is to, I was speaking to some a sideline business partner today. And I was telling her, I said, I, it's okay to have the vision to help make Planet Marketing a household name, just like Mary Kay is. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And that's what I always look at Mary Kay. Okay. But we have more than that. Mm -hmm. It's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. And because a long time ago, I used to always like, you know, I think I told you this one time, um, Tanisha, that back in the day we had VCRs and stuff like that. I would turn off my answer machine, turn off everything, make me a little something to eat for the weekend and be like, go to the library and get some tapes of destinations. And I said, that it would be really cool to have a, a, a business where I can travel because everything I did was so I can have some money to travel. It would be really cool to have a business, just sitting there, just thinking to have a business, a travel business that was created by a black person. So when you brought it to me and dropped it in my lap, remember the first thing I said was, if I can just get a room for, um, uh, if I can book a hotel room for myself for a cake conference or a cake competition, you said, yes, I said, I'm in, I don't have to see nothing. But then as it goes along, how can I help people with this? I couldn't understand that. So with my journey, I'm like, okay, how can I help people? And not, cause I'm not, I can't be selfish. I don't understand how, I don't know how to be. And that was something that um, someone said, well, you have to learn how to, you know, for yourself. Right. I don't know how to do that. But for myself is to help something else that's great, be yes. great, to be a part of that. I and I sat down, I was sat down, I was gonna say, Sister Wynn, with Director Wynn at Super Sunday, and she helped me understand that we go up and stuff like that. And they've sat down with you as well. So between you and Director Wynn, and then being there Super Sunday, I'm like, okay. And that the one man. that the ancestors must be proud. I love that. I love that, Miss G. Oh, hello, hello. I am. Yeah. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, see you, meet you, meet your husband. Yeah. No, like brothers and sisters. 
Well, I just left an appointment. That's why I've been all over the place. But before I take off in the car, I wanted to say that I am, yes, on fire. I am, I have learned so much. This is not my first one. I guess I was about four months in and got a ticket for the last one uh, last year. And I knew I was coming back because I bought my ticket already. And this time, guess what? The Lord blessed me. I got four tickets. I'm taking, I'm bringing business partners next year. So um, I just feel like my next level is right here. And um, yeah, I'm ready to drop, you know? Right. So uh, that's what I feel. Thank you Thank for you. this. Up. Michelle? Okay, you know, <laughs> not that this was an epiphany, let me put it that way. Because uh, I've been at every convention since I've joined the business. And, you know, I was thrilled to death because this is the first time where I've had several business partners. We had nine business partners that came down. Nice. So I was beyond excited with all of that. <laughs> they were phenomenal. Just watching mm -hmm. their excitement. But there were several things um, that came up because my mother had always said when we were going through school, sit in the front of the room. You always go, you can't, you're not going to learn a thing in the back of the room. Sit in the front of the room. Too many distractions in the back. And so when he said it, I felt like with my mother reaching down saying, it's time, get to the front of the room, make this happen. And so then that also resonated with me when I was talking to Director Scott one day, and he just came out of the blue saying, do you feel like you deserve this? Do you feel like you deserve to be successful? And it caught me off guard because the immediate answer is yes. But when all this came together through this convention and watching how many business partners, you know, took time off from work and how many more just couldn't get to leave to come down, it was like, it just all, came, it was like, it was like almost like this whoosh at you of, girl, it's time. Stop playing with this, get up, make this happen. We got a strong tribe, but everything, I mean, every convention I walk away really enthusiastic and really energized, but it's always just that piece that stands in the way. This one, I felt like it just threw us over the fence and it's time to make it happen. I agree, I agree. Pandora? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This uh, this was my first convention and I was very clear on my why, but being in the midst of the evidence of the work of the people that had you know, pushed through to get through, it gave me my why not. Why not share this with people? Why not help people? Why not? I, I, I wanted to help people at first, but it, it's even more now. So my why not is just as strong as my why. You know, because I've always helped people, but I always gave a hand out. Mm -hmm. This this is gives me an opportunity to give them a hand up. Yes. To help to show them how to to provide for their family and leave a legacy. So it opened my eyes. I've been running a hundred miles an hour on the way to Mississippi. I was working. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Corey. <coughs> Uh, good, good morning. It's still morning here. Um, but this was my first convention since I joined the business in October of last year. And um, it, it was, I guess it, it was on time because I was in a very um, bad space to the point where I just, I almost wasn't going to go. I was just going to forfeit my ticket and just not go at all because um, I was just in like in a very bad headspace. Um, but I'm very grateful that I went on ahead and went because, um, it was a very, um, empowering, um, convention, just being around, um, just listening to the speakers. Um, it did help get, give me like the, the push and the motivation mm -hmm. that I was needing and what I felt like I was missing. It was just everything. And I think um, Koya, I think what she said, she said it best. Um, everything that she said, I agree with 100%. Um, because it all resonated with me. I think Eric Thompson did a um, phenomenal job. Um, his, he just was actually like the icing on the cake. So he definitely, when he closed it out, he, he was wonderful. So it would definitely just help, help me gave me why I, and I'm very happy that I, I, I came, I went. 
Awesome. Awesome. Me too. And don't forget to get on my calendar because we, we missed each other. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Shamika, who I didn't think was going to be on. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, I was coming on. I'm sorry. I'm not on camera. Uh, I'm not in the place to be, but um, this convention, this was my second one. And let me tell you this, it all just came together for me. The, my biggest takeaway was it can happen for me. It can happen for me. The only difference in between the people that was on the stage and me is the work ethic. So I have to just put in all my efforts and just be successful. And another um, thing that really made me just take a different look on um, planes and how they take flight is every time is when he talked about the pilot, the flight attendant, the air traffic control and the grounds crew and how we need to be all four of those at first. Um, I just like how he broke that down. Um, it really made sense to me. And also when he talked about the wild dog um, versus being a lion, right? We always hear, you know, the lioness and the lion. And we broke down that wild dog. I had to go research the things for myself. Like, okay, this wild dog sound pretty cool here. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and I also, um, thanks to the beautiful director Green, I got a chance to put that sapphire ring on and take a picture so I can have a vision of it on my phone. And this just really... This one, this convention right here was just like, it, it not only did it clarify that my why is, is strong enough, it's like, okay, you need to do everything you can in order to get that accomplished. And this just, it was, it was everything this time around. So I, I can't wait for the next one. I love it. I love it. Miss Koya. So I will say, um, you asked about the why, the importance of knowing your why is everything. I'm gonna be very transparent. I came in a convention, I didn't have a why. I was just doing it because I like to travel. So I sat down with one of my coaches and she literally asked me question after question after question and then hit, now I know my why. Ever since I've been waking up after convention, all I think about is why I gotta run this business. Why I gotta do this, why I gotta do it. If you don't know your why, you need to figure it out because it's gonna keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. How many of you, and just type it in the chat, who was able, able to buy their early bird ticket for 2024 convention? Just type me in the chat. Who got it? Zara, Michelle, Stormy, Tracy, Karen. Okay, good. Matthias, Pandora, Bethany. Okay, wow, a lot of you got it. Good, good. Yeah, it's sold out now, but now you just got to pay the regular price. So I, I encourage you as part of holding yourself accountable to the business, go ahead and, and get that ticket. Lock it in. Lock it in now to hold yourself accountable so that you are in your mind saying, I know I'm going to be here and I know I'm going to walk that stage. So let me go ahead and get that ticket now. So if you have not gotten your convention ticket, please go ahead and do that. Ms. Delta, I see your hand up. Yeah, sorry about that. You know what? I I just wanted to. It, it's it's so many nuggets that 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 just fell out of just 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 fell upon me. But what I want to say is, I was unfortunately wasn't able to do the early bird special for the ticket. But I think at this point right now, it's an investment. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to pay, like I did the, uh, this first time I, right out the gate. I, it's just I was so excited before even getting there to pay the three twenty five. The second time around, I don't have a problem in pay, paying that that because it's, it, it's an investment into me. It's an investment in me getting all the information and knowledge that I can, so I can be able to help other people. And I think to hear everyone with their with their wise and things like that, that elevating and getting to that level, it's about being able to being at the right place at the right time to help people. So it's an investment. The three twenty five at this point. It's a drop in the bucket. I don't mind paying it. I'm looking forward to the next one and the next one after that. Awesome, Definitely. awesome, awesome, awesome. I love what kind of blew me away was how Dr. Eric Thomas was blown away <sighs> by us. Yes. We have accomplished up until this point. He was so hyped 
And I felt his, he was excited. He almost jumped out of his shoes. Like this man's been traveling the world for 30 years. And for him to be blown away by what we have accomplished. And we only been in business for less than eight years. It just confirmed a lot of things for me that I was in the right place at the right time. And that, um, and I've always said this, Planet Marketing is not just a business, it's a movement. It is truly a movement. It is a an international movement <clears throat> to set people free. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. What we're gonna talk about today, how many of you are in the, Oh, Benita. Oh, okay. How many of you, <coughs> excuse me. How many of you are in the No Limit Success Academy? All right. And how many of you, we are in week one. Beverly, are you available to speak? Beverly Thorne. Okay. I, I'm not right now. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. <coughs> Michelle, can you do me a favor and just give a synopsis of what is the No Limit Success Academy, please? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so it is the 40 days, 40 nights, but we are driving it home with our businesses. And ultimately, um, if you're not in the group yet, you can feel free to reach out to your director um, or a sponsor, and they should be able to help assist with getting you in the group. We can get a link out to you, um, but it is a public group. But ultimately, it's going to be leadership driving at home, giving you every ability to be, be successful with this business. And my understanding is that with the boot camp, the amazing boot camp we had at the beginning of the year is going to be the base for all that we're going to be doing. So you don't want to miss it. This is your opportunity to literally be able to rise to, a very, to the various levels and understand what is involved in getting the work done. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So week one, everything is based off of uh, the boot camp that Director Brown and I did. Like um, Michelle was saying, it's based off of the 40 days, 40 nights, what the work looks like boot camp. And so for those of you- Two things are the most certain about you. Number one. So I'm gonna share my screen. And so what you want to do is to access the videos that we will be going over or using for the No Limit Success Academy. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Lifestyle by Tanisha. Click on playlist and you will see a playlist called 40 Days, 40 Nights, What the Work Looks Like Boot Camp. And so right now we are in week one. And so what you want to do is watch the week one videos immediately because that is going to be the discussion for the Zoom that we have on Wednesday. Now, who watched the week one videos and can tell me what it's about? Um, I watched it. Um, it's about creating your list. Um, not about who's going to join you, um, who did this and who that, who did that, but actually about using the memory jogger and just blindly writing down those names with people that you come up with and who can benefit from the business. So it's definitely helping with creating the list and having an ongoing list exactly. on top of that. Exactly. So everybody have their list. If not, have a blank sheet of paper. Um, cause I'm going to help you start your list right now, or if you have your list, this is something that you can add to your list. And so the question that you want to ask yourself, and, and this is how you also work with your new business partners as well, is who do I know that could benefit from this business? Who do I know that could benefit 
from this business. You're, you're definitely not asking yourself, well, who's going to say yes? You don't know who's going to say yes. I promise you, you don't know. If someone would have told me two years ago that my brother-in-law, Mike Burke, was going to join the business, I would have said, you's a lie. <laughs> but not only did he join the business, he came to convention. And so the people that you think will do the business won't. The people that you think won't do the business will. So ask yourself, who do I know that could benefit? Uh, people who own a home, do you think they could benefit from this business? If you're a homeowner, you understand that you need to have an emergency fund, right? Because if the hot water heater goes, you can't call the landlord, can you? You are the landlord. So start thinking, who do I know that owns a home? And start writing their name down. Everybody that owns a home should be on your list. How about people with children? You think children are expensive? <laughs> I got one, so I, I, I be shaking my head at the people who have three, four, five. I'm like, I don't know how y'all do that. <laughs> one is enough, right? They're constantly growing. You have to keep buying clothes. They want to eat every day, <laughs> right? Some of them want to play sports. <clears throat> so anybody who has children, they can benefit from this business, right? So everybody that you know who has children, start start writing those names down. They need to be on your list. They could benefit. How about people that are working two jobs? Do you think they want to work two jobs or three jobs? You think they want to work 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week to pay bills? No. So anybody who's working multiple jobs could benefit from this business. So start writing those names down. What about independent contractors? AKA the self-employed. You gotta ask yourself, what does retirement look like for a hairstylist? There's no 401k, is there? When they go on vacation, they don't make any money, do they? When they stop doing, they stop eating. So anyone that you know who is an independent contractor, AKA self-employed, they need to go on the list. So think about the people who drive Uber and Lyft. Like I said, the hairstylists, the barbers, the makeup artists, the people who do taxes, because guess what? When you stop doing taxes, you stop eating. Real estate agents, when they stop selling, they stop eating. Insurance brokers. Even the traveling nurses, they're, 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 they work on contracts. So if they don't do a contract, they don't make any money. So that's what I mean by independent contractors. They are the magic. If they stop doing, they stop eating. All of those people need to go on the list. What about Generation X? Where are my Generation X people at? Anybody around the 70? Bethany, Mike. We don't we we looking at, at at the time thinking I'm not trying to work like this until I'm 72. Forget that. Is there a way for me to retire early? Am I lying? Is is that what Generation X is thinking about right now? That's exactly my thought right now. <laughs> exactly. Anybody who's Generation X, it's so easy to peak them. If I could show you a way to earn income from home so you can retire within the next three to five years instead of working until you're 72, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Every Generation X person is going to say yes. 
every last one of them. People are sick and tired of punching the clock. They are overworked and underpaid. They want time freedom. Life is just flashing before their eyes. So reach out, anybody on, that's in that Generation X needs to go on your list. And I just told you how to peek them. And I promise you they're gonna say yes. Retirement is not about age, it's about income. What about the baby boomers? Could they benefit from this business? Everybody that you know who is a baby boomer, first of all, if you're on here right now and you're a baby boomer, just type boom in the chat. Type boom in the chat. Here's the thing about the baby boomers. They're retired technically, right? From their main job, but a lot of them had to go get a part-time job to supplement their income. They shouldn't have to retire and then go back into the workforce. And their retirement is not enough income to combat inflation. So some of them who were just working a part-time job just to have something to do, needed to up it to full-time hours. And for health insurance costs, yes. So anybody that you know who is a baby boomer, add them to your list. And again, it's super simple to peek them. If I could show you a way to earn some additional income from home to supplement your retirement, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Millennials. Could millennials benefit from this business? I love millennials because they're they're like, I'm not working until I'm 65. I'm, I'm, I'm taking that trip to Greece right now. <laughs> I'm going to Dubai. I'm going to find a way to do it. I'll figure out how to pay the bills later. Anybody that's a millennial, add them to the list. If I could show you a way to earn some additional income from home so you can live your best life now instead of later, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? The millennials are going to say yes. Same thing with Generation Z. They will say yes as well. So when you look at it, it goes back to this. Every single person you know needs to be on the list because they probably fall in one of those categories I just mentioned. And part of the week one, if I'm not mistaken, and Michelle, you can correct me. Do we talk about launching, having a PBR? What was the play that I called for week one? Okay, you got me. Yes, it's, it's, yes it is. Thank you. Yes, we, uh, <laughs> we launch. Okay. Yes. Yes. So for those of you who have been in the business for a while, I wouldn't necessarily call it a launch if you've been doing this for three years, right? Call it a business broadcast where you're show or a business showcase or a travel showcase or something like that. And here, y'all hear Skylar? She said, let me in now. So I want to talk about the inviting process. I have had, as you know, when I, when I, as part of the 15 day quick start, when I um, go through part one with the new business partner and we're scheduling their launch, I schedule four launches over four weeks. So that by the end of the four weeks, they have become a master inviter. 
They have invited, you know, 20 to 30 people to look at their business opportunity. Um, by the end of the month, they should be a bronze builder or very close to bronze or at least have some commitment dates. Um, and by the time that $60 is due, now it's coming from their profit and not from their pocket. But a lot of times on the day of the launch that morning, I send a little message to whoever I'm launching and I say, how many confirmed guests do you have for tonight? And a lot of times that number is very low. Oh, I have two, I have one. And what I'm gonna say to all of you is, do not waste your leader's time if you're not willing to do the work to have a successful launch. Because we're gonna bring our A game. And what I mean by that is, a lot of times those people, they've maybe invited like five or 10 people. And that is the problem. That's why the numbers are so low on the launches. And we tell you to make a list of 20 to 30 people. You got to invite like 30 people just to have maybe five show up. So make sure that you are taking the time to invite 25, 30 people to your launch so that you have the greater chance of having a decent amount of people show up. And it's not that some people don't wanna show up. Sometimes just something happens. They have every intention of showing up to the launch, but then something happens and they don't make it. I know my husband's been inviting, he goes through a list of 70 people when he does a, a, a presentation for himself. 70 people he's inviting. So you got to ask yourself, how many people are you inviting to your launch? Who just realized they need to increase their numbers? Thank you for being honest. It's, it's for me, it, it's very disheartening when I block the time to do a business launch for someone and I get on and it's me, the business partner and two people. It's disheartening for me. I'm gonna still bring it as if there were 30 people on, but it's like, you could have just sent them the video and got me on a three-way call. That's how I feel. I'm like, this is not a launch. That should have just been two three-way calls. Get the best bang for your buck. And you wanna invite 30 plus people so that you can have the best outcome. Cause you don't wanna waste your leader's time with two people. If you just got two people on, just, just send them the video and schedule a three-way call. Seriously, that's not even a launch. Now, I know a lot of people, anybody having a hard time finding someone to do their launch? Have you reached out to your leaders to schedule it? No issues? Okay. Well, Debbie, did you have a question? You're on mute. Yeah, that would definitely help me take off mute. Um, <laughs> I'm having difficulties with finding someone to do my launch. Okay, so what I would suggest you do is combine it with another business partner who does have one already scheduled. Because okay. I know my calendar, for example, was booked before convention. Okay. So I had someone reach out to me and I'm not able to do it. I'm doing two launches today, two launches tomorrow. So get with someone who already has one scheduled and you guys, you know, do it together. <coughs> so I also suggest that you do that with your downline too. Because as we go into momentum, things are going to be moving rapidly. 
calendars are going to be filled with three-way calls a lot. And so there's not going to be a lot of time on your leader's calendar to, to do some of these things. So, you know, let's work smarter and not harder. W, you may have someone in your downline. Y'all can combine together or get with your accountability partner. Do it together. It doesn't have to be a director that's launching you. It could be a gold builder. It could be a DIT. And this is another reason. Anybody collect business cards at convention? Did you make some new friends internally? Good, good. Get with those people. Build those. Build rapport with them. Because those may be some people that you can collaborate with. As a matter of fact, that was something that I heard repeatedly on the stage from a lot of people that they said cross-line business partners. Y'all hear that a lot at convention? Cross-line business partners. Those are people that are not on your team, but they're in Planet Marketing. And a lot of people contribute some of their success to those cross-line business partner relationships. So take advantage. Don't just put the card in the box and don't think about it. Reach out to that person, see how you can collab with them. They may be able to help you with the launch. You guys might be able to get together and do the presentation together, you know, on a Zoom. They may become your accountability partner. So make sure you leverage those relationships, build the rapport, but do not make it an abusive relationship where you're take, take, taking from them, but you have nothing to bring to the table to offer them of how you can help them. That's what we call an abusive relationship. So you got to get your weight up. Study the presentation. So that you can offer to maybe do some launches for them or collaborate on a Zoom with them. All right, make sure you're reading. All of these things are very, very important. But for right now, I just want to focus again, we're in week one. So if you have not watched the two week one videos, you need to get that under your belt before Wednesday. Take your notes, get that list going. And as you know, from the video, the other thing to add to the list, I'm sure many of you have posted tons of pictures from convention, right? I haven't even had time to go through mine. But anybody who liked or commented on your pictures need to be added to your list. If they're not already in the business, anybody who liked or commented on your pictures from convention need to be added to your list. And make that a habit going forward. You should be posting every day, even if it's just a good morning post. This is how you see who's watching you. Just add them to your list. And then this way, when you're setting your weekly goal of how many people you're going to peak, and let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to peak 70 people a week. Sunday night, you go to your list, you grab the next batch of 70. And some of those people who commented on your post are going to be in that batch of 70. Those are the people that you peak for the week. Any questions about the list? Can I say one thing? Sure. The um, funny thing about when you talk about the list, I was just going to say I want one to upgrade my list to make it to 500 to 1,000 people on my, um, on my list. And then when you said that, I'm like, okay, it's confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a running list, so it should grow. It's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, that list is gonna be growing. That's why you need to have a dedicated notebook just for your prospects. Or maybe you're using a spreadsheet. Anybody using a spreadsheet to track their list, Michelle? The spreadsheet is really, really good um, because then you can add a column for where they live. 
and then you can sort it. So, you know, Tuesday night, Atlanta, you can say, okay, who lives in Georgia? And now you can invite those people to the Atlanta meeting. Beverly? Uh, just also in the uh, No Limit Success Academy group under files, there are some tools or, or files. And one of those is the prospect list that uh, Director Brown had given us when we initially did the training with you guys. So that uh, prospect list is there. So they can use it if they like. Yes. So let me pull this up. So if we go to the No Limit Success Academy. And right here under files. You have the PDF for your first year of network marketing. This is something you should be reading. The week one assignment, the pre launch invitation. Here's a prospect follow up tracker. So if you need, if you want to be that person that instead of using a notebook to write your leads on, you want to keep it digital, that's what this is conversation starters and the memory jogger. Make sure you look at all of the featured um, information posts that were done. Beverly did an amazing job just giving an overview of everything and what to expect. Everything is there. Everyone should have been on the IMV this morning. My thing is don't come out of convention talking about you on fire and then you screw up week one because you don't do everything you're supposed to do. So if you have not listened to the IMV yet because you know you didn't catch it at eight, don't go to bed without listening to it. So that you could check off the box. Okay, I did this for today. I did my reading for today. Check. Have a list of, it's part of your DMO. Everything you're supposed to do today. Everybody should already have the list of people that they're going to be inviting to their launch. So make sure you do all those things. Beverly and then Shamika. Oh, I was done. I guess I forgot to let me. Okay. Shamika. My hand. Okay. okay. So this time around, um, I want to use midnight. I want to utilize midnight madness more. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do want to have a mentality of abundance. I know there's some people out there who will get on at midnight, but I don't, I don't know, like, should I be calling these people early in the day? Should I be calling these people a day before to get on Midnight Madness? Should it be a different kind of invite? Great question. Focus on the West Coast people. Because okay. they're three hours behind us. So it might be you calling them or messaging them at 11 o'clock at night, but it's only eight o'clock there. Okay. Because they're makes three hours behind us. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So definitely leverage the Midnight Madness. There was over a thousand people on Midnight Madness last night, which is phenomenal. So we definitely want to keep those numbers up. Michelle? <coughs> Okay, so I'm glad that came up because I was going to check in with Greg a little bit later. There were a good number of us who could get on Midnight Madness, kept asking for an access code. I wonder if that was, did you get the number from the old flyer or the new one? Because Mr. Moore changed. <clears throat> Make sure that the flyer says new in the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Um, because the old one, some people had, depending on what service they had, had to pay for it. So he changed the number to a toll free number. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so Shamika, thank you, Shamika. She just posted the new flyer in the chat. So do leverage that. And again, it's per that's perfect for anybody on the West Coast. Delta? Yes, I wanted to know um, when we go over to your page for the uh, Success Academy, do we have to put in or to come up to so we can be able to you know start the academy how does that go say that again 
to um, go into, you know, to set up for the uh, Your Success Academy, mm -hmm. do we have to put that title in or um, under your name? How does that go? No, you're talking about to get into this group? Yes, yes. No Limit Success Academy, okay. You should be able to look for it. I was trying to send the link. I can't do it from here. Okay. I'll just, because uh, I, I am. Right, I, so here's a QR code. <coughs> Or if somebody can post the link, you can. You should be able to. It's searchable. Okay. Success okay. Academy. Just search groups. Okay. All right. Thank you. Or get with your um, your director. Let me see. Share. Does this work? Copy link. Here we go. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so I just posted the link in the chat. Again, make sure you stay um, stay on top of everything. You don't want to fall behind. So everyone should watch all of week one, the two week one videos, and get that list going. Get as many people on your list as possible. All right? And so I'll be back on Thursday. See y'all Thursday. Okay, I have, I have a question. Yeah. Where do we find, well, how do we get to the videos that you were talking about? It's in the chat. It's in the, um, again, when you're in this group, No Limit Success Academy, go to featured post. And in the featured post, you're going to see where I posted the link. Where is it at? Or is it on the pin post? Let's see, might be under discussions. Let me see. I know I posted it right here. Okay. Here's the link to the playlist of videos for 40 days, 40 nights. So it's a YouTube channel. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. Well, I will see you all on Thursday. Well, actually, I'll see you on Wednesday for the No Limit Success video. So everyone have a great day. There's a question in the chat. What's the question? Uh, let me see. You have to be under uh, within Mr. Scott's um, organization. So it's not my No Limit Success Academy. It's really Mr. Scott's and anybody under his team that can do it. All right. All right. See y'all later. Amira, you stay on.